in-house league brought to us by the Heroes Heart Celebrity Clash League. My name is Bahamut. I am one of the casters this evening. I'm joined by McIntyre. How are you feeling? And are you ready for some? Just are you ready for this best of five series? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm excited. We get to go back to the new Heroes of the Storm world where we're getting to see Tower Aggro being a, an enemy of these players tonight. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to it, and, and we're actually. We're just gonna jump into it here. Um, we're hot dropping. Yeah, so we we'll finally get to see you know how these players have learned to adapt to the new kind of functionality of the game, right? In the tower aggro and and what's within a week, right? What what is it built and changed within the game that these players are doing now? Um, yeah, yeah, really excited. Again, Monday night's in house league. We're gonna be casting that me and Baja here. Um, yeah, this is it's gonna be a really fun evening. I'm excited. Hey, we got a lot of good players uh, popping up tonight. They are going to be playing for a $75, $25 split. So uh, it's a decent amount of Taco Bell money, as some of the players were saying earlier. That's what they're here for. They're here for that that Taco Bell money. But we find ourselves here on Towers of Doom for game number one. Now, McIntyre, I had the pleasure of waking up at 4 in the morning on Sunday and casting European games. Oh, wow. um, and... Honest to God, the game number one was a struggle, but we, we, we built momentum. I want to ask you this. Why does NA hate Tyrael with such ferocity? Oh, why? Because you just saw Tyrael all weekend? Because all I saw, <laughs> it was first pick Tyrael. Oh, yeah. And I was like, we were on, I think we were on Sky Temple and someone first picked it. And like me, of course, as NA, I was just like, oh, that's Juice Pirates. Like, and they were just like, no, 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 <laughs> like Bahamut. This is just what we do here in Europe. And I was like, all right, fine, whatever. But what, yeah, is it, is it just the aggression? Is it the speed? Is it the shielding? Like, what is it about Tyrael that's such a, it's, that gravitates Europe towards that so much? I, I, I don't know. Like, I guess they're, are they putting emphasis, like, elsewhere in their comp? Like, is it is it the Rainer picks? Like, is it, maybe they've gotten to a point where they've realized that, like, tanks in Heroes of the Storm just aren't good, right? Like, you're, you're better off having your frontline, like, be very difficult to kill, but simultaneously okay. also being a support. So it's almost like a double support comp, right? But you're okay. flexing your frontline tank as a second support, if that makes sense, right? Because a, um, a lot of them, they would they would still run things that we see here in North America, which is, you know, Grey Main, Li Ming, and ETC. Power slide, die from Grey Main, Li Ming, throws a combo, that's the blow up, that's it. And so it's just, it was such a, it's just a, such a weird dynamic where you see a lot of, you know, similar things, but you also have these outliers where it's just like, priority on Deterial was a big one, as well as Rhaegar. Rhaegar Bloodlust is so high valued but mm -hmm. we can get into that a little bit later as we do have about half of our draft all way, all, already <laughs> through here and i want to point out the sylvanas now when the changes came through a lot of the players were saying sylvanas's first pick first band material do you still feel that way i mean obviously seeing her there on the top right <laughs> uh yeah i think that now with the tower changes too sylvanas is even stronger when it comes to that uh and, and being able to turn off those towers especially on a map like towers of doom it's like how how can you not take her here right uh we're gonna see even more emphasis on boe all those push maps right yeah so definitely actually will be removed as well because you know skyfall is actually a really good delay tool he's a good brawler um they don't really have anything i will know that they actually they do have the cursed bullet so i'm actually no oh yeah me. i'm sorry i'm reading it backwards keep says like nothing to deal with this. yeah yeah um towers gray towers has gray man i i wouldn't yeah like this to me is not um I, this is not a bad bloodlust, right? We just talked about the Rhaegar, and look, boom, right there. Hey! Oh, one second. You, I got something to check really quick. Okay. All right. Well, well, while they're checking that, while they're checking the stats for Europe, we'll go ahead and dive into this draft a little bit further. Malthiel was removed on the left-hand side because they don't want to deal with that in the solo lane. Malthiel's double rotation with against the Orc or even just against anyone in general is actually pretty strong because of on a pale horse at level one. So being able to increase your your base movement speed, excuse me, your mounted movement okay, speed. Okay, I'm back. Where do we Where do we go? 150%. Uh, we are going to be having that makes sense for the band wise, but a Chen coming out keg W's in chat. Is it here? <laughs> is, it is it here? Is it ready to go? Is the keg W a reality? Oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta try myself. Uh, keg W, it's there. We did it. We did it. <laughs> that's it. This is all. That's that's all I needed to do at Heroes Hearth. All right. So, um, we have that now that we can spam. But that is gonna be a Chen. Um, a Chen but, into Leork is actually gonna be interesting. They probably need a yeah something to deal with the Chen. I like the leaming. It's good reset. It's good poke. Mm -hmm. It is kind of like a dull pick on with the Rhaegar. Like maybe something. Like a Thrall could have been... I think Thrall with Sunder would have been massive. 
Um, cause, cause I, I see, I see their angle though. Like I definitely see that where they're coming from, you know, War Garrosh has the, uh, Warlord's challenge. Greymane has the dive in. Li Ming throws in a combo. There's an entomb from Leoric. It's the same kind of setup in, in in a sense. So like, I don't know if Rhaegar is going to be so much bloodlust as it might be ancestral here, just to get that big burst of healing onto someone like Garrosh who's getting dove upon, or maybe it's Greymane who's trying to get in that back line. So I, I like I'm fifty fifty on this. I'm just I'm not too sure. But uh, before we load into this game, I mean, do you have any other do you have opinions about these two drafts? Um, looking at the two drafts, I, I think the biggest like winners for each of the team uh it's gonna be probably for team i'd say towers it's gonna be the leor pick actually he's he's gonna have a okay. lot of king a lot of uh like his entombs right um uh, obviously if he goes string gray that'll be a good you know with a spooky build um and then over on side keeps I, I would actually put a lot of the significance on this of this match onto the jaina uh i think if the jaina is able to or sorry not not the ETC, sorry, that's what I wanted to say, yeah. So the ETC with the Janna, like the synergy between those two, I think is going to be the win condition there. Um, being able to get slides into picks um, and pressuring that Garrosh. That's the other thing. Both characters can, can control the Garrosh. If the Garrosh gets out of control, I think they're going to have a hard time. But uh, look at it. I guess we can introduce these players as well. Um, looking at Team Towers. We have Kelsey is going to be playing the Grey Main. Funs on the New York. Weary Day on the Rhaegar. Chijuggy on that Garrosh and Goth Filth on the Ming. On the right-hand side, we got the members of Keeps. We are going to be seeing uh, Porky on the Ana. Pirate Rome is going to be on the Sylvanas. Tiger JK on the Jaina. Valimar on the Chen and Lupus on the ETC. Is this going to be a big blow up on two funds immediately? The kick comes out from Valimar as well. Not going to be able to find initial kills. Lupus cycles back towards the friendly team. This should be Leoric rotating up into top lane, going for that solo lane as well as Chen doing the same thing. But the rotations between mid to bottom are going to be the key factors here for both of these teams. Li Ming's going to need the regeneration globes for her power hungry at level one and Janu will need them for her fingers of frost at level one as well yeah we, we even saw there like immediately at the beginning the power of the etc Janna, uh and and how much more that's going to deal as like we get towards the talent tiers as we get towards you know the nano boost and icy icy veins like these yep. things are are gonna just continually to incre increase and and be more threatening as the game goes on so it is going to be up to that leork to not get slid and stunned right he needs to make sure his e is, is strong maybe hitting the drain on etc those sort of things uh i guess as we continue to team fight and get into the later stages are, are going to really be what makes and breaks the, this game yeah and i always like to i always like to go on my, my ramble about this but bottom lane is one of the most important lanes on towers of doom because of the double sapper camps you have Reason being is you can grab them, you can feed them in through bottom lane, potentially get them over the wall and get damage into the enemy's core, dealing actual damage to, well said, core. But mm -hmm. also it makes rotations into bottom lane more difficult because you don't have that fort or that keep up and available. You have to go through the sapper camp area or directly through the middle of the map, which is a little bit more telegraphed and the enemy team knows where you're coming from for some of those objective phases. So it's just bottom lane, we're probably gonna see a lot of priority. I would expect at some point the Leor can tend to maybe start breaking into double rotations, but right now we're seeing Jaina and Greymane dealing with uh, mid lane as this is gonna be a bit of pressure coming in through bottom. Three sappers will be able to collide with the front gate. Yeah, no, you see the wall and the tower go down. The, the lane's already kind of almost broken open. Even in the top lane, Funz is doing a really good job of dominating this Chen. Ooh already got his wall and almost towers down right um this is again the new tower world so having towers down in the top lane and being able to be more aggressive as leoric um without that tower aggro being there is, is going to be incredibly important um as tiger gets caught out here by chijuggy he is going to get a cheap shot 30 percent reduced picking up the kill there is going to be kelser lupus maybe out of position as well with a slide a good attempt there but a really good Grosh throw, right? The Grosh kind of getting out of hand here, finding that pick on the Tiger, and they are going to be able to take him down there. Well, big thing to note, too, is that the Garrosh went into body, body check at level yeah. one, no Warbreaker either, so they're going to be um, slowing the enemy and also reducing their healing. So the slows, I believe, 35%, and the healing reduction is 30 So anyone's, you know, if you're trying to maybe get a, a chain heal from Weary Day, that's that's not happening on to, on to um, excuse me, not uh, Weary Day, from, from Porky, excuse me. Uh, either way, they do trade out the top left and the top right. This is going to be Jishuggy looking for an angle just to keep body blocking the enemy team from stepping in over here as uh, Porky taking a little bit of damage, drops the Biotic Grenade on themselves, and Lupus now trying to zone this back as uh, Chen does come down here, and Leor's oh. rotation a little bit. Oh, Lupus! Ooh, getting really low there, but Tiger JK will get the channel, and they'll be able to back off as you can see the stagger still going out from Balamar. Kish is opting here to 
sacrifice the objective for experience. It's not a terrible strategy on the map. You you now, you know, on side towers, are, are, you should have the XP lead for a good rest of the game, right? Um, you you kind of can trade that for Shrine to maintain the XP lead. It just comes down to, you know, do you use it? Like, right now, they're going to hit level 7. Do they use mm -hmm. that 7 talent tier to achieve something? Um, that That's what I think we look out for now um, after they've sacrificed it for the experience lead. Yeah, I'm just watching across Ooh. the map as they make rotations. Tiger taking a whole lot of damage right there from that from that uh, combo from Li Ming. So they're gonna they're actually gonna slow them down in their rotations, forcing them back a little bit. Weary Day gonna get this uh, clear into bottom lane as they'll go ahead and jump over and grab the sappers on the left hand side. You can actually see on the right side of the map, Porky and Tiger make the long rotation down into bottom lane. Uh, just to be able to avoid any sort of invade from the enemy side. But now Lupus setting up here, just anchoring really well as the main tank for the friendly team, providing vision, but also kind of forcing back the enemy team as that's going to be an indomitable from the garage. They're going to power slide away. You can see that healing reduction, that negative 30 uh, purple kind of right next to Lupus's name. That was from that body check from, from the garage trying to slow them and find that kill. This camp hasn't been collected yet. That's going to be Pirate trying to get the banshees away and that will be enough damage they'll find another kill here on the side of towers and keeps need now to back off as they get a double sleep but this will be camp going over to the side of towers i think overall that was an incredibly good rotation from the leoric actually he was yeah. the one who kind of made that play happen i'm picking up the sappers they end up taking down another tower because of it um you can see the xp lead just jumping even further ahead they probably even pick up the wall and get the shrine here if they position correctly uh I think it was a really good invade, and Lupus did a good job to kind of get thrown in, stay alive, and get out. Uh, and yeah. ETC can do that really well versus Grosh until level 10. I think once Taunt comes into play, the CC chain there is, is too long for ETC. You can see the slide actually coming out from Lupus, almost taking Chujugi down. Rhaegar, ooh, a nice throwaway reset. Tiger taking a lot of damage, but a really good attempt there from Lupus uh, and the rest of the team to try to one shot the garage out there right Rhaegar doesn't have a lot of healing in reality so if you can press a lot of damage into him uh it's possible to just burst him out um as we saw there they actually almost got that kill onto them it, it, like weary day got a heal onto jachuggy and it did nothing because porky yeah. got a bite a grenade just as that was supposed to connect so it was just really really well played they just needed a slight bit more damage and they would have been able to connect onto that kill but we still see the members of towers up in 10 talent tiers as well as up two in kills as they are playing this map a little bit more aggressive you were talking about the warlords challenge that is going to be coming in no helicopter garage coming in but we i was actually not expecting this we do have a bloodlust garage or excuse me gray main coming in oh my god not even gray main that's gonna be Rhaegar. <laughs> that's going to be fun trying to raid walk in my brain can't even say the right talent as that will be bloodlust out from the Rhaegar. it's just i'm expecting kelsier to get a lot of value here as that will be the solo dance mosh pit gray main immediately dark flights in that will be the leor going down unfortunately wandering keg the keg w's in chat almost gets Kelsier over there as they're going to oh. actually dive in further and they find oh the my. kill and the kill. Garrosh tossing some members away and this looks like it'll be a full retreat out from the members of Towers as they use the wave of force to back off the enemy team but this is a double altar phase and they've only lost one on the side of Keeps. Yeah and with funds going down he can obviously Leor his way back True. and spook back so they are going to have a little window here where on a, we have a 5v4 but with the Leeming pick they, they should be able to kind of oh unless Leeming gets slept here can Lupus Nice throw away from Chijuggy into a body shot. Porky's just channeling the whole time, though. Got they, it. Oh, wow. So much pressure. But Pyro taking a lot of damage there from Funz as well. Probably just get healed up here by Ana. That was a really good position there to play aggressive so that Porky could sneak that channel, right? And the sleep obviously opening in that opportunity up for Team Keeps. But we are going to see a bit of a posture now as both teams just off to do their pumpkins. Um, this is going to be an interesting one for Chijuggy, I think, because... He needs to kind of hide in a brush. Just playing into their comp from the front is very difficult. And yeah. that Leoric and Tomb. Oh, as I say that. <gasps> the stagger. Oh, no way. Oh. The face melt from Lupus was 200 IQ right there. And Tiger gets the channel as well. Oh, no. The Entomb, too. That was as fun. Nano Boost coming out. Tiger's doing a lot of damage. The Barrel Keg W knocking everyone around they have no, they have no control over their characters even though bolas is going lupus taking out resets from godfield is gonna be enough tiger godfield's no mana the chase down from the well he's probably gonna be enough to at least net one more kill look at your juggy there it is yeah, they get one slowed. more auto the armor's oh. good on them though i think they should be safe because they also we have to remember the the 
towers themselves, so these these bell towers will reduce the armor by 10 up to 40. So mm -hmm. that dive is very, very risky. Now, they did get rid of the slow, so you're, at least you're not slowed, but you still will be taking significant damage from those towers. But Valimar and uh, Fun's going to be just brawling out as they'll go back into rotations. And it looks like bottom lane will once again be the uh, apple of both these teams' eyes. They're trying to control this lane. But realistically, I don't think we've actually seen a bottom bell tower go down just yet. The game currently feels very even even though the, yes. the shots say otherwise. And that's, I think, the interesting part about Towers of Doom in general, is, like, the game really isn't over until either team has zero, you know? And in this case, while it looks like Towers is losing, they're ahead in XP, right? The Orcs done a good job of soaking, maintaining that XP lead, I'm assuming. Let me look at the stats here, pull them up. Uh, yeah, so he's up, you know, 3,000 XP on the almost, yeah, almost four, but around three on the chin, right? And that's allowing, you know, for all these trades, uh, as Thalmar is just, yeah. He, oh, and the Entomb on the oh, Tiger. Oh no! Ice block Ice is there, block Lupus might look for a mosh pit, maybe? Slides, does miss. Nice Entomb, slow coming out, a cleanse from Chijuggy to throw in Weary Day. Is he gonna be able to get the slow totem down on Porky? He chooses not to. But, yeah, I mean, it looks like, because of these picks, right? They're, they're, they're maintaining that experience lead. And it's opening opportunities like that because of their presence on the map. Like, Valmar, I don't know if he thought that, like, mid was a safe place to be, but their ability to wave clear so quickly and be anywhere allowed them to, you know, get that pick here. Chujugi actually showing us that if you take a couple tower shots, oh, a nice Great. Lupus flank. Lupus power slide from the back. They're setting up face melt backwards. There's the power slide. Gonna get a wave of force to interrupt the mosh, but immediately Weary Day very low. They're gonna find the kill onto them immediately. Jachuggy is trying to make their way out. They do actually pop the Indomitable, uses the Warlord's Challenge, maybe sacrificing themselves to get out the rest of them out, but Li Ming still went down. The Orc is actually gonna get power slid chased on a little bit further. Doesn't look like they have any sort of CC to control this fight any further, so they're gonna have two enemy members get away, but that was a huge pickup in favor for the members of Keeps. They're gonna regain control and they're actually going to go for a double sappers for bottom lane. Pirate on the right-hand side and a couple members on the left. And that'll be some good pressure for them as bottom right bell tower got con uh, converted over in favor for towers. But I think they're going to go for the double conversion here with these death timers being as long as they are. The Welly actually just coming out to confirm that. They'll okay. probably be able to back it up with the Sylvanas and retake their own. One thing that I want to point out that was very interesting in that fight was actually the Nano Sylvanas. So they nano boosted Sylvanas in that fight. And you would think with a Janna that you would typically put it onto her. But I guess the Sylvanas found an opening onto the Li Ming and just blew her up. I don't know if you saw that as well, but the Li Ming just exploded in that team fight. And I think that that's crucial to their success in these fights. Um, if Li Ming's able to kind of get in a lot of poke and sustain and get that reset, uh, that's that's going to spin a lot of these. That, that has been spinning these fights. Um, I, I like this play here too from Towers to just take the bot, the top four as much as it's not as strong as the bottom. Some would say, you know, in this in this case actually, you know, it forces team keeps the play to the bottom and right side of the objective. You know, as they pick up the yeah. channel there on the left, the Orca nice taunt comes out on the loop. Is this going to be enough damage? He is so. Oh my gosh, Anna! The wandering keg though is saving that entire oh. fight enough to share from Chen. They kick back in. That's going to be great. Garrosh going down. Leork is trying to reduce the damage as they kick out once again. They find a kill on the gray main. Godfil's trying to get out of here as there should be a slow from the water elemental. Does manage to do so, but they should be able to clear that out. That'll be top right channel going over to the side of Keeps. And they managed to get eight shots in total. And they even out this game here, McIntyre. Wow. That's a wild ride we just went on. Actually, not even that. They they go ahead. Excuse me. Caster math kicking in. <laughs> they 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 were able to pick it up and Possibly even a boss here, fun scouting there, but you know, three, three of the heroes are gonna be down for the side of towers. So we're, uh, what is that, a four point swing, something along those lines. Um, Four damage from the boss, taking them down to 12. But I mean, you said it earlier, and I always like to say it on this map, it's Towers of Doom, it's anyone's mm -hmm. game. Oh, this is a good catch right here. Wave of Force to push them back. That's gonna be a nice blink away. The Blizzard won't catch anyone and they're able to disengage from that. We saw there just how bad it can be if they don't get that reset right they, they're committing everything as you see here lupus actually taking the bullet if the reset happens but tiger is fighting in even though the orcs here he's doing a great job to reduce the damage pirate on the run here he does have i believe the level 60 movement speed on q so it's gonna be very hard to run that sylvanas down but yeah, a good execution yeah. of the one shot there right uh not having the keg w around to save him this time 
Uh, he needs to respect that. Porky actually caught off of Jogai as well. Looks like he might get taken down. Maybe Pirate as well on that reset. Oh no! Is he, Wave is gonna Ooh. get him away. Kelser, why oh. would you just not tumble? But okay, that's gonna be enough because Bloodlust gives him movement speed. Uh, and this is this game is out of control right now. This is gonna be probably a two shrine, double keep. Maybe oh maybe they're learning that towers do a lot of damage now. They do have the totem to tank up some aggro. Weary Day dies. Uh oh, oh, weary day. oh, <laughs> oh my weary. gosh. Ooh. They need to back though. They need to get healthy. Even though two people are dead, I mean, I don't think they the objective actually... is free here, right? They're pretty weak. Weary, weary Day is shit. actually dead. I think they're just going to tap well. Yeah, they got well. They're actually going to invade on the right hand side. Juggy very low pops. Indomitable turn to back off. Water Elemental is out. That's Leorc using the Wraith Walk to get damage reduction once again. Does have that ominous raid, so they are able to use the. Uh, oh, well, that's a really good wandering keg. The entomb comes out, kind of locking to Chuggy in here. That's not working out for them. Moshpit comes out from ATC. That's Jaina and Garrosh being traded out. Really, nothing's going to be done onto Lupus as the Moshpit full duration goes out. Fun's trying to get the channel while Lupus is trying to back out of there. That increased um, uh, face melt range on. Excuse me, loudspeakers from level mm -hmm. four is actually helping them out a ton. Because typically we've seen a lot of teams go for that speed metal, but loudspeaker paying dividends in this game number one. Yeah, that invade was so aggressive, and they, they had the right idea. They, they needed to get the pick early, right? Because Porky and Tiger were coming back, right? The Jaina and the Ana yeah. were on the way. And if they don't win right then and there and they get stalled a few times, then they're going to have two players come in full health, full mana, ready to roll. Um, and we saw that the engage was actually really well. Like, they, they the Entomb landed. The Grosh got to throw the Jaina in, right? But, like having ice block having the barrel and just having the ability of you know etc to kind of knock people around like you said the loudspeakers lupus a good entomb here great bullet but bolt of the storm is taking a 20. he's Ooh. able to blink out of that had it, imagine as as big brain as funds as entomb was if he had just actually entombed the etc he would have been silenced and that would have been a pick probably but a great escape there from lupus uh to kind of get away and but we do have fort control here and we have six six sappers coming in let's see if they're able to hold them yeah, this is potentially six damage if they're losing a couple here and there garage gets a groundbreaker onto one this is a lot of them they could use the face melt but they actually oh my god pirate is getting a good quick clear onto that with the help of uh tiger jk as well between those two they, they made swiss cheese out of those sappers but they're going to continue to hold over bottom lane excuse me i just want to zoom out a little bit further show you all kind of the setup right now as this is this is pretty much the the lane control we were talking about earlier, but the reason they're just they're holding them back like this is because they don't want to give over this bell tower. You can already see Jana rotating into the top lane. I don't know if they're going for sappers. I don't they think kind of. Uh, yeah, she could bust. She could bust the sapper camp pretty quickly, right? Um, I think she has she has Pierce Q. Yep. I don't That's know true. why he started with a Q. Okay, maybe I don't know. It's positionally though, like this is this is the thing that I want to get at right now is now your Jane is rotating in an awkward yep. position. This, yep. this is what this is what I was trying to get at a, at a point. Oh. I was just like, I, yeah, she might be zoned a little bit. You can already see funds on the left getting the channel over there, so they at least stop that damage coming in. And I think this is just gonna be three for five. This is just a hard fight. I want to say, actually, it looks like a fight breaks out, and Garage is taking out immediately. Bloodlust is gonna be landing, but Kelser getting a keg W right to the face. Shin taking a lot of damage. The Entomb is going to hit Ana. Is there any follow-up from the Li Ming? A potential reset. A blink on Lupus is going to miss with the Mosh Pit. Kelser doing his best to damage the backline. Pirate taking a ton of damage. But Ana is able to survive there. A massive orb connecting as well onto the three. But all that sustained from the Ana. And we just saw right there in view of everyone what I was speaking on at the beginning of the game. Garage can die. Like, if... They hit the buttons on him, he dies. And we saw there, immediately, not even Northern, a second, boom, gone. Northern exposure mm -hmm. on Garrosh helps a ton with 20 armor reduction onto that one. But the other factor too is they were nano boosted. So they were increasing that power as well. Wave of force with the repulsion from Li Ming. Weary Day finds themselves on an awkward side of this engagement. Well, they do get the bell tower in their favor. That will be the Rhaegar going down, staggering out of death for 60 some seconds. No boss invade coming out. I think realistically, they this could actually try boss. and take boss themselves. Because yeah. there's no healer. Like, Li Ming could pop off, definitely. But with ETC zoning, with the enough to share from Chen, with Wandering Keg up and available. Big Entomb? I, I... <gasps> oh, oh, they get the Jaina. Oh. Keg W? But they're going to buy time. 
power slide from the ETC. Lupus is going to be able to get in there. Got filth has damage over time. They're going to be falling right there. There's going to be a warlord challenge from the Garrosh as well. Enough to share from Chen was giving some shielding right before that. The Chuggy getting very low will Disasters. go down. Leork is going to get picked off as well. Power slide from ETC. They realize this isn't even worth chasing that Greymane. They sleep dart them. Chen actually going to just wandering kick <laughs> the Greymane into the friendly team. They're just like, look, I can get the Greymane. And they're like, no, no, it's fine. Just, just, just hit the hit the boss. Now here's the issue. Bell Tower is up. Kelsey or Ken go for this channel, and Valmar will. Uh, ooh, this is going to be a bit of a rough fight, but the boss was grabbed. The rotation from the team is coming out, and I think McIntyre, this is going to be game number one over to the side of Keeps. Leork will not be able to re just resurrect in time for this. Can we take a moment to just recognize that Chin just beating down Greymane, like one of the best melee characters in the game, and Chin just whomped him there even after taking a curse bullet? Like, is Chin the real deal? Bah? Am I missing I something? I don't know why people sleep on Chen so much. Like, I have been an advocate for Chen for ages. And I don't get it. I don't just don't get why people don't love the panda. The panda's great. Storm Earth and Fire is just a great, like, you sit there, you hit Stagger, you take a lot of damage, and you hit R. Hopefully no one interrupts you, and then you just live with Storm Earth and Fire. Or you 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 want to control the fight and you want to literally peel people, kick in, and then wander in keg. And then when things get hairy, you have enough to share at level 13, and you just sit there and drink, and you're fine. Your friendly mm -hmm. team carries you through the rest of the... Like, how many times did Chen... There was like three or four times when Chen should have died in that last game, and they just didn't, because drinking value, stagger value, healing obviously from Porky actually was clutch in those moments as well. Um, but just in general, like, it was just really, really well played, and Chen, I think, is just undervalued a lot. I I guess I, I never realized that Chen had a 20 talent that just makes him unstoppable. That's pretty pretty insane, huh? Just every oh, time yeah. you press your D, you're, you're unstoppable. Found, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you have a kind of like a, a giant's uh what's it what's a, what's the ability Rancor? What's the is it the 16 ability on Vala? When you hit three autos, it, it Yeah, drops. you have it right. Yeah, you have it right. Uh, while Chin has shields from Four of Fighting Brew, he gains a t wow. Yeah, I guess like this was this is a character that I never really indulged in after the rework, really. Right? Um, I think it was just after a chapter of playing top oh, lane. Maka, Maka might have it. It might be Manticore. It is Manticore. Both of those, both of those sound okay. correct to yeah. me. Rancor, <laughs> I don't Manticore. Play Avala, yeah, yeah okay. but I was, I was like, yes, that is a volatile. <laughs> I know it's up there in yeah. her build, but yeah. Um, Ah, that's, that was a good game number one. Yeah, I need to uh, bug the teams and see what they want to do for game number two here. and um, Showing the builds as well for everyone if you want to see.